In this session, I will be covering the important features of wide area network, intranets and then LAN, e-commerce and cost, cost involved in the networking and at last I will be discussing some important issues regarding the assignments which I had given you. The, let us see the first topic wide area network which in short form we can call that one as the WAN. Before going into the details of the wide area network, let us see what is the computer network. From the very smallest computer network, suppose if you have two or three connect, two or three computers connected on the network and then to the large network which is connected with some hundreds of computers over long held distances. The data communication is possible due to this particular computer network only. So, in brief we can call uh, we can give the definition as follows interconnected collection of autonomous computers is called as a computer network with which with whose help we are able to access we are able to uh, get the data uh, from a very long distances. Suppose, if uh, some computer is at 100,000 kilometers distance and then if we are connected on the network then we are and our computer is also connected on the network. Suppose, if you want to access a particular data on that machine then it is it is possible nowadays. So, with this particular uh, computer networks only with the principle of computer networks only. So, interconnected collection of autonomous computers is called as a computer network and then what are the key elements that contributes this particular computer networking concept. So, the principal elements that will be contributing are three which we can mention as media, nodes and then protocols. Media which is the path provider that on which the data can travel. So, this particular uh, uh, media we can call that one as the links, transmission lines, controls, lines anything we can define the, the define that particular uh, media as some transmission control line. Suppose, if the uh, cable cables are there uh, telephone cables are there and uh, the network is all cableized network then that particular media is called as cable media. So, we are using cable media as the media to connect the computer networks and then comes the nodes. Nodes are nothing but the stations where some input or output of the uh, network is to be given. Suppose, if some input is to be given or we are using multiplexers, switches, routers, gateways all these comes under the nodes or else we can call that one as the intermediary stages or we can call that one as the stations. This provide the means for inputting and outputting data over the transmission media. So, these particular nodes are connected to the transmission media or else media and then these are these will work as the stations which uh, on the transmission lines which will provide the input or output to the computer network. And the third comes the protocols, these are nothing but the set of rules for managing the network pathways and the flow of the data. So, these particular protocols tie the computer network and uh, uh, this particular uh, network will be acting as a functional entity because of the protocols. So, if there is a uh, communication between one computer one network and uh, ne other network which are following different uh, different rules and uh, rules then these protocols will be uh, helping and tying together those particular networks and help in flow of the data. So, that is a uh, responsible job responsible for these protocols. So, the, the I will summarize these three particular key elements first is the media or else you can call that one as the lines and then uh, uh, lines, links, transmission lines anything and then the second is the nodes or stations and the third is the protocols. And depending upon the size of the network, geographical constraint and then the functionality these particular networks are divided into three. So, the first one is the LAN or else we can call that one as the local area network and the second is the metropolitan area network or else in short we can call that one as the MAN and the third is the wide area network and in short we can call as the man what is the long uh, what is the local area network suppose if uh, in your institution uh, there is a network and it is of uh, geographical constraints that uh, it is within the premises within the building itself so that is called as some private network where in which there is no public interference or no public uh, uh, allowance or something is there 
and it is privately maintained and the whole whole and sole responsibility is the man who is maintaining that particular land and this land over which uh, the data is transferred it may be within some uh, 1 kilometer or 2 kilometers of uh, geographical constraint. So, basing upon this geographical constraints and permissible uh, situations a network is called as the lo local area network and the second is the metropolitan area network. Let us go into the details of this LAN, MAN and then WAN. What are these uh, LANs? As I told you before, these are the privately owned networks with a single within a single building campus or organizations up to a few kilometers in size or geographical constraint. Here the geographical constraint is in the distance. The lands are distinguished from other kinds of networks by three characteristics. Suppose uh, first one is the size and then what kind of transmission technology it is using and the third is the topology. What is the topology? Topology is the geomet geometric construct or geometric arrangement of the network. A computer's network geometric arrangement is called as the topology and the configuration is nothing but the physical physical outlook, physical look of the physical actual appearance of the computer network is called as the con uh, configuration. So, there may be uh, slightly some misconception between the uh, uh, topology and then this configuration of a network. And then what is a metropolitan area network? It is a bigger version of a land and normally uses the similar technology. It might cover a group of nearby corporate, uh, corporate offices or a city and might be either private or public. So, this uh, metropolitan area network spreads in a geographical constraints of about 5 to 25 kilometers, something like uh, within our premises to nearby and nearly nearing to the uh, city out uh, city limits also. So, in this man in this uh, metropolitan area network this supports the both the data as well as the voice to communicate and this may be the public kind of system public uh, uh, network we can call this one as the public network or it may be managed by a private thing. And what is a wide area network? This is the biggest uh, this is the largest network when compared to LAN and MAN and uh, this may be uh, spreading to a uh, few kilometers to thousands of kilometers and this wide area network is a data communications network that covers relatively broad geographical area and often uses transmission facilities provided by common carriers such as telephone companies. So, these particular vans will be taking help from the telephone companies which will be uh, providing them the carriers data carriers or voice carriers and they will be utilizing them and uh, the payment will be uh, made to them made to the uh, telephone companies by the vans who are using the things and these are uh, uh, these we can say that as the public maintenance or else public networks. And what is a subnet? So, collection of communication lines and the routers forms the subnet. So, suppose in a van there are uh, several components, several uh, computers, several things attached on a land and uh, this particular communication lines media and the routers forms the subnet of the uh, subnet of uh, subnet for a LAN. So, suppose in here the computers that are the uh, networking computers net, the computers on the network are referred to as hosts. So, they we are connecting the host there will be some uh, the communication media or the transmission lines uh, routers everything and this will form as a sort of uh, a small net or small network and this is called as the subnet. So, uh, within this particular LAN the transmission lines the routers and other elements forms the subnet to connect the host on the network. And then there are different transmissions media and uh, uh, technologies different uh, transmission technologies involved in the lines in, uh, involved in the van and there are uh, classified into three types of things and the first one is the point to point link. All these transmission media or this particular uh, uh, technologies or terminologies uh, the point to point net point to point link circuit switching and packet switching all these will be depending upon the strategy or the transmission style they are uh, following up. So, in this particular point to point links this provides a single pre established van communication path van communications path from user premises through a carrier network to a remote network. So, this thing we, we can call as a leased line. So, 
this will be uh, this will be laid from the premises where the LAN is existing to the connecting the van and to the point where the telephone uh, or else the provider is there. So, there is a established line well established line or else point to point link is there between this uh, van and the provider. So, this will be uh, acting as a leased line or else dedicated line and uh, this type of transmission is called as the point uh, this, uh, this kind of technology or this kind of connection of van is called as the point to point linking van connections. And then the second thing and the second uh, style of connection is the circuit switching. The basic difference between the point to point and circuit switching is this, this particular switching method in which a dedical physical circuit is established maintained and then terminated through a carrier network for each communication session. Suppose, if a session starts then we have to dial to that circuit or else establish that particular connection is established whenever we are uh, ready to communicate and then the particular uh, connection is established maintained and then terminated uh, where, uh, after the session is over. So, the basic difference is that the before uh, point uh, in the first case the point to point uh, link there is a dedicated connection there is no concept of uh, uh, getting the connection or wells or else waiting for the connection and then uh, be, uh, uh, the data transferring is occurred and later on when it is over and uh, uh, if at all there is a termination the it is to be terminated. There is no particular concept in the point to point protocol point to point link, but in this circuit switching there is a concept and we have to wait until and unless the particular connection is established then only the data transfer from the host from particular host to the other host is possible. On this particular computer uh, computer network, the computers on the network are referred to as uh, referred to as uh, hosts, and there are servers which provides the services to the other company uh, servers which provides the facilities to the or services to the host. Suppose if there is a database server connected, this is uh, responsible to uh, fulfill the requests of the host whenever some database access is being done on that particular server or else there are printer servers, network servers. So, every server we will be having its own duty or duties. Suppose, a server can be have a, only one server can be put to, uh, to act it as a network server as well as the database server. So, the host even the host can be uh, uh, made available or else can be uh, given the shape of a server upon which the services can be done the services can be taken by the host. And then the uh, third type of uh, linking is called as the or else third type of technology of connecting a LAN is called as the packet switching LAN. It is a WAN switching method in which network devices share a single point to point link to transport packets from a source to a destination across a carrier network. So, this is uh, similar to or else nearer to the second method called as circuit switching, but uh, the pack uh, the uh, data will be traveling in the form of the packets from the source to the destination. So, this is the uh, basic difference between the circuit switching and the packet switching uh, packet switching when uh, linking and then what is a virtual circuit. There are different uh, uh, different kinds of virtual circuits, but first of all see what is a virtual circuit this is a logical circuit this is not a physical circuit, but this is a logical circuit created to ensure reliable communication between two network devices. Suppose, if there is one network device connected and there is second network devices at a far distance places. So, there can be a virtual circuit or else virtual uh, connection logical connection where in which both of them can be transferring the data using this virtual circuits. There are two types of virtual circuits which we will be seeing it in the next slide and uh, that particular uh, uh, can be summarized as uh, switch, switched virtual circuits or in short we can call that one as SVC or the second uh, second is called as the permanent virtual circuits both, both are the logical circuits and there is a uh, difference there is a slight difference between the switched uh, virtual circuits and permanent virtual circuits as we had seen in uh, as we had seen the case of uh, circuit switching and packet switching there is a slight difference between these two and which we will be seeing in the next slides. Uh, actually this 
uh, switched virtual circuits are meant for establishing on demand and termination when transmission is completed. These circuits, these logical circuits, not the physical circuits, these logical circuits will be established and terminated on demand and the transmission will be taking place, taking place between the hosts. And there is the second kind which we had discussed and that is called as the permanent virtual circuit and the difference is it is permanently established virtual circuit. In the uh, prior one it is a temporarily established uh, and in the second thing it is a permanently established logical circuit which will be uh, meant uh, which will be uh, the main or primarily responsible for the data communication over the hosts, hosts in WAN virtual circuits. And uh, there are different uh, components which will be uh, uh, which will be uh, connected on a WAN circuits, WAN uh, links or WAN technology. There are different components and uh, primarily we are speaking about the uh, hosts and then servers. Other than these things, there are different equipment, different uh, components that are connected in order to strengthen the concentration or in order to connect the ends, in order to provide the communication between different WANs. There are different components acting as the interfaces and let us see one by one. The first thing is the WAN switch. It is a multi-port internet working device which is, which is used as, which is used in carrier, uh, carrier networks. These devices typically switch such traffic as frame relay x.25 and SMDS and operate at the data link layer of the OSI reference model. So, this particular WAN switch is primarily responsible to connect multi porting internet working device that is used on carried networks and uh, this is meant for uh, controlling the traffic as frame relay x.25 and in SMDS. So, this is the particular component we will be using or else we can call this one as the switching component we will be using on wide area network. There is a second component called as the access server. So, this access server is responsible for concentration point concentrating the dial in and dial out connections. So, this is uh, suppose this is connected at the end after a multiplexer or any other um, equipment on a LAN, on a van where in which this is primarily responsible for strengthening or else concentrating this point to point dial in or dial out connections. So, this is the component we will be using and the third is the modem or the main media we are using is the as the transmission media is the telephone lines in order to send the data from one host to the other host. So, suppose uh, and we know that uh, uh, computers will be communicating only on the uh, on the digital means, but there should be some interface or else there should be some, some interpreter which should interpret the uh, digital signals to analog signals such that they can be that uh, digital signals which are convert which are already converted should be traveled on the voice uh, communication lines or else telephone lines such that it can reach the other end and then there should be another converter, con uh, converter such that these voice lines or else these analog signals may be converted and uh, should be converted to the digital uh, signals. So, this is the device, this is the modem is the device we will be using or else uh, the full form is the modulator demodulator is the device in order to convert the digital signals into the analog signals to travel it on the to travel them on the communication lines such as the telephone lines and then at the other end do this, this particular uh, component is responsible to change it to the uh, analog signals to the digital signals. And the third and the fourth one is the CSU slash DS, DSU. What is this CSU? Channel service unit. This is the unit or the uh, digital service unit. These are the units or else these are the digital interfaces which adapts the physical interface between the uh, on a data terminal equipment device to the interface of a data circuit terminating device in a switched carrier network. This particular device will be acting as a interface or else converter or else some means of uh, communication between these two digital interface device and the data terminal or else data terminal equipment or else we can call that one as the DTE. And the next one is the ISDN terminal adapter. This is the inter, uh, inter, uh, interface or else interpreter or else some means of converter which will be acting as an interface uh, between the ISDN BRI connection and the other interfaces such as EIA, TA, 
TIA 232. This is the interface or else these are the components EIA uh, slash TIA are the inter components and uh, between this ISDN uh, BRI uh, this thing and uh, uh, this uh, EIA uh, interfaces this particular uh, ISDN terminal adapter will be acting as the interface or else some mediator. And then going before uh, going into the details of the internet let us see what is an internet. There is a, a confusion between the terms intranet and then internet. Actually, what is an intranet? Intranet means the same thing, the same concept, may be the internet concept may be applied, but uh, provided by some with some constraints that is within some uh, with uh, the access with within some organization, the uh, web access within uh, some organization or uh, some with some organizations. So, this is the basic difference between the intranet and internet. So, uh, going into the definition, let us look into the slide. It is the implementation of internet technologies within organization rather than for external connection to the global internet. It is based on communication standards of the internet and the content standards of the www that is called as the world wide web. Suppose, if you want to, uh, they, suppose there is a manual uh, communication or else some office automation is there, where in which a, a fax message, a fax is there, telephone lines, uh, telephone communication or else some uh, uh, intercom is there. Then there is a possibility of only voice exchange. Suppose, even using fax, you can exchange a little amount of uh, or else you can exchange the text material or some figures, but using the voice, uh, this one intercom, we will be using only the voice signals. Suppose, if you have a site or else if you have the LAN connection and if you have if you have the server and there are several forms or else several uh, different kind of formats. Suppose, if you want to apply for leave or if you want to apply for uh, something or something, then the, the different formats uh, are to be procured from the de, uh, concerned department. You have to fill them up and then you have to uh, submit it to the concerned authority for the necessary approvals. But in case suppose if you are having the intranets and if these particular formats are being transferred into electronic means and are uploaded, then you can directly download them, fill up, fill them up and then you can upload them. And this particular uh, internet connections are only responsible for the internal or else only within a permissible communication media means. So, it may be uh, fulfilling the needs of a company, an organization or one or two organizations or else to the branch offices or else related organizations, this will be providing the communication. So, with this particular internet concept, a particular company can be fully automized or else fully, um, fully uh, can be uh, made as some communication uh, organization such that a, uh, all these things are possible using only one particular concept called as the intranet. This is the uh, using the same technology, whatever we are using the suppose if you are using the www concept on the internet, the same thing is applicable to the internet also. And the content standards of this internet are fully dependable on the uh, www only. And then whatever the technologies that we are using in the internet, so, suppose HTML technology and then some uh, front end technology, back end technologies and three tier architectures, whatever there are uh, there on the internet side we are using, those are all applicable for the internet also as it is. And then the structure of the internet you can view, view it in the next slide. In this, this particular thing is called as the internet wherein which I had put some square mark. And then this, but this internet can also be connected to this internet internet is also connected to the can be connected to the outside world outside world and also um, that can be made online or else as uh, or else it can also be put it as some extranet what advantages we are getting from this intranet this particular after doing the intranet for a uh, uh, for a, uh, for an organization it will become the whole uh, communication will become cost effective easily updatable only one single change will or else one single change will uh, reflect all the things and easy to deliver information 
easy to have information available on demand, it is well secured, easy to use, configure, manage, well suited for multimedia applications and it, this can also be the gateway for the internet and then it can also integratable with internal corporate databases, can be set up company wide and also by department or functional area. So, this intranet we can divide on that particular intranet also every employment, every employee whoever uh, is uh, enrolled with that company may not be accessing everything. So, there are some permissible levels or else some restrictions are there, passwords, login names, passwords are provided such that only particular person is uh, whoever is concerned with particular information he is allowed and there are some uh, general information which can be allowed or accessed by every employee or else suppose if there is some corporate database that can be made uh, possible made available on the intranet also such that all the employees may can be benefited by having that database on their desktops. So, what exactly is the extranet and how is it different from the intranet? An extranet is a set of content also shared by a well defined group, but one that crosses enterprise boundaries. So, inter intranet whatever we are talking about is within the permissible boundaries and this particular extranet it is uh, somewhat crossing the enterprise boundaries and that particular extra using that particular extranet we can access the intranet whatever whatever the intra information that is available on the intranet using the security uh, protocols. So, uh, using this extranet there is a little difference within the boundaries we will be calling that one as the intranet if it is made applicable if it is made up available or applicable for the other parties outside the boundaries then that particular thing is called as the extranet. And what are the problems that can be solved using the intranet? There are three, per, uh, I had evaluated using three different uh, perspectives and first thing is the business perspective. Using this uh, particular intranet and looking from the business perspective, uh, the first thing is the better decision making within which the access and the quality are the factors contributing the, uh, to this better decision making. And the second is the improved customer relations. The, uh, the factors are the timeliness, relevance, satisfaction, these are the um, uh, different types of criteria which will be contributing to the improved customer relations. And the third is the better bottom line, this will be decreasing the cost of uh, information uh, transferring and increased in the relevance. Suppose, if something is put on the internet. So, some authorized person is responsible or else some authorized person is uh, job is that the necessary information or else the information whatever that is put on the internet that is the relevant correct and absolute information for granted it may be taken. And the second perspective is from the operations perspective and making information easy to find get and use and the second is the making bi-directional digital communication available to everyone on their desktops. And the third is the make development faster and easier. And the fourth one is the allowed distributed development and management. This is the second type of uh, perspective which we are considering and uh, this is called as the operations perspective. Suppose, if something, something is to be uh, a note announced to all the employees. So, using uh, uh, one uh, the the person who is responsible or else suppose we, if we call that person as the web administrator or webmaster, then we have to forward uh, through proper channel the information to him, then he is the person who will be taking care of putting it on the web and putting it on the internet and all the employees within no time they will be observing or else they will be uh, knowing the material, uh, the relevant material, the correct information through the intranet. And the third perspective what we have, uh, what I am going to present is the functional perspective. And uh, include uh, this uh, particular function, functional perspective, the features includes the administrative functions. Within this will be the making availability of the forms and then uh, the databases, the information and then suppose the meetings are held, the, the minutes of the meetings and then if some uh, announcement is to be made, these are comes, uh, comes under the administrative functions. If some uh, uh, 
uh, clarifications are to be given to the employees regarding the salaries and all these particular uh, functions or these particular categories will be put in we will be considering it under the functional perspective that too under the category of administrative functions. And the second is the materials distribution suppose if the uh, suppose if the uh, employee is undergoing some training and the uh, he, he has to have some material or have some uh, uh, booklet then it can be made available through the internet and he can go through that particular booklet at his own pace. Then this so using uh, considering that particular uh, material distribution we can put it on the internet and uh, under the category of materials distribution and the third is the education and training. So, nowadays we are uh, hearing about the e-learning online education or else web based education or else computer based uh, training all these terminologies. Suppose using the internet also we can provide the user training within the organization uh, without uh, within the organization within the uh, without any time loss. So, this particular education and training uh, the employee can enroll on that uh, uh, on that site or else on that particular module then he can undergo the training he can give the even the examination also he can read the notes he can even he can get the certificate online. So, these are all the things uh, coming uh, coming under the category of education and training and the fourth is the project management. In this project management suppose if uh, some project is going on and the related material or else the progress whatever uh, they are uh, doing uh, regularly the or else some diary or uh, anything regarding the project that can be made on the internet such that the status of the project can be very well known within no time and the human resources suppose if there is a shortage in the human resources that can be announced through the uh, internet or else if there is any promotions within the organizations to be announced for then that can be put under the human resources category. Then market research suppose uh, uh, the most of the organizations are uh, fully uh, 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 fully uh, depending upon the depended on the uh, research or else the marketing research how the things are going on and how their company is uh, positioned and what are the different uh, things or else what can be the solutions or what can be the measures that can be taken in order to improve the um, uh, uh, market products of that uh, uh, market for the products of that particular company. All these things all the solutions all the things can be uh, put together on the uh, put together on the internet under the category of market research and there can be the help desk purchasing and then software distribution. Suppose if somebody wants some software then he has to go to the division concerned to the computers and he has to claim or he has to put some requisition slip and then he has to get the um, uh, software uh, he has to enroll it and then he has to get the software he has to load it on his computer then he has to return back and he has to cancel that particular uh, requisition. So, all these things are time consuming things suppose if suppose uh, if suppose that particular software is made available on the internet then there in the uh, there itself he can download the material suppose if some winzip is there or else some uh, uh, some virus uh, antivirus software is there or else some communication software is there or else some messengers are there then these particular things all can be made available downloading uh, download facility available on the internet then they can be downloaded within no loss of time. So, these are the some of the things that can be viewed from the functional perspective of the internets. And what are the internet management roles? Let us see who will be playing the active roles, who are the partial, who are, will be responsible for placing the contents, who are responsible for uh, maintaining the web security everything. So, there are uh, declared 5 roles I had taken and uh, these are identified to support the formal internet contents. This is with uh, reference to the contents that are to be put on the internet. The first one, first role is the web administrator role, a web master role, publisher's role, editor's role and the author's role. What actually is the web administrator's job? Let us look into the slide. Primarily he is the manager and he is the facilitator. He can be considered as the manager or else web manager or else the facilitator who will be facilitating all kinds of information that is to be put on the web and he is responsible for facilitating cooperative opportunities among the various organizations in the enterprise. If there are different uh, groups, different sections or different departments in the enterprise, he is the coordinator or else he is looking, uh, he will be facilitating all the information on the web to the different uh, enterprises or different uh, sections 
and he will be chairing the enterprise web council and would report to the either CIO or the vice president of the strategy. So, this is the thing going on the going on the internet and this is the material I had been put on the internet and uh, he is the whole and sole responsible person to uh, look after the intranet uh, information to be available on the internet of the organization. And what are the roles of a web master? So, web master generally is an extension to the or the modification of existing system of admi administrator roles. In some organizations, this particular web master uh, role is uh, uh, been hired or else we is merged into the web administrator's roles or in some organizations web administrator roles are merged into the uh, web master's roles. So, both of them are slightly together in uh, many of the organizations they will be following the two roles and the webmasters are taking on more training responsibilities as part of their job function. So, suppose if uh, some uh, training is to be imparted, internet training is to be imparted to the employees, then the webmaster will be looking after the training uh, to the employees on the internet, how to access, how to browse, how to get the passwords, how to get the uh, secured uh, things and then um, how to get the forms downloading, everything will be uh, everything is the job of the webmaster and then roles of a publisher. These are the persons who are responsible for making the content available pu published on the internet. Publishers own the process and policies that both the enterprise and their organization require officially sanctioned information to flow, may delegate the monitoring and implementation of policy conformance to editors. These is the roles or these are the jobs of the publishers and uh, what is the uh, uh, before going into the editor, what actually is the editor's job? Editors are found in the organizations that have multiple product clients or service areas. In some of the things, some of the um, companies, uh, even the editors and the publisher's roles are merged together and will be calling under the publisher role or else under the editor roles. In most of the organizations, there are two different roles explicitly saying, and this is the jobs of the publisher and these are the jobs of the uh, editor. And what is the role of the author? Author is nothing but he will be the whole and sole responsible for creating the content, the whole formatting, the content design, how it should be looked, how the downloading thing should be looked, how the forms or else how many forms are to be placed, how the information has to be designed, everything is a, is a, will it be requiring any multimedia efforts, all these things will be taken care by the authors. And then coming into the internet applications, mail is the one of the application, whiteboards, threaded discussions, forms of databases, voice and video conferencing, web based discussion forum and then online polls, company forms, policy and procedure manuals, live chart, employee phone directory, organization size, all these th all these applications can be put on the internet, uh, internet and can be made available to the employees. So, so, we are uh, talking about the networks. So, in order to set up a network, either it may be a LAN, a WAN or else either a MAN, more, there are different costs involved in the uh, network installation or implementation. So, there are some costs directly, um, uh, directly uh, depending on some costs that are those are indirectly depending upon the uh, network design. So, what are the costs involved in the network implementation? In this uh, particular uh, uh, slides, we will be looking into the costs involved in the implementation of a network. So, what are the goals? What are how can we design a well planned network? So, what are the goals? That should be whatever the network that we are designing, that should be more reliable, lower in cost, a uh, cost that should be highly flexible or more flexible and simple to support and use. So, these are the four criteria upon which we will be depending and upon which we can will be calling it as a planned net network. So, if the all these four features are are being successfully implemented, then we can call that one as a very good planned network. And then what are the different costs involved in this networking setup? The costs that are determined by a number of factors among them are how many users actually using going to use that network and what distance that particular network should spread on and what should be the speed of communication, 
either it should be a complex network or it should be a simple network. What kind of client services that are should that are to be provided and what kind of design or else what kind of uh, configuration or else what kind of uh, topology that should be uh, put it on and what are the ongoing costs. These are related to monitoring maintenance and upgrades of a networking. There are some costs which are uh, which we can call as uh, direct and indirect. Other than these particular things, there are ongoing costs. After the setup of the network, there will be some more costs adding into picture. So, suppose if you want to train the employees, so those are also coming under the network uh, implementation only. So, those are considered as ongoing costs, ongoing costs. Suppose there are some wear and tear parts, then those particular wear and tear parts should be replaced uh, from time to time. Those are also coming into the picture into the uh, coming into the picture under the network implementation, cost of network implementation. So, these both are the ongoing costs, these are related to monitoring maintenance and upgrades of a network. Suppose, if there is any upgrading required, then this is also coming uh, under the ongoing cost and uh, all includes the cost related to the training both for network users as well as the network support staff. This is, uh, this is also coming under the ongoing um, cost. What actually are the infrastructure costs? Suppose, if you want to set up a uh, LAN, then what are the hardware components, what are the software components, how many uh, cables we have to buy and what kind of cables should we buy. So, all these things will be considering what kind of infrastructure to be set up or what kind of area we have to provide, all these will be coming under the infrastructure cost. In a network, the infrastructure also accounts a little of the overall network cost and component typical lifespan. There, uh, every component will be having some typical lifespan, life period. So, component typical lifespan also counts along with the network cost. Suppose, if it is a variant or part, then it should be replaced. So, all this will be coming into the picture and these are also the additional costs or ongoing costs that will be contributing into the cost, cost in the cost of the in, uh, cost involved in the network implementation. So, what are the hardware part or the software part that is to be considered? In this slide, we had shown the things server hardware, server software, what kind of server that, that is to be set up, what kind of communication lines that are to be laid on, what kind of backbone connection, backup systems, what kind of security firewalls that are to be implemented either it is a hardware security or it is a software security firewall. So, all these particular things will be considering and uh, uh, implementing or else uh, making an impact on the cost involved in the uh, network implementation. In your material, this is, there is a uh, particular component given or else a particular layout given as the cost estimate analyzer. You can use that particular cost estimate analyzer and you can implement the uh, networks, you can plan the good well defined networks. And, and, uh, and uh, there is a term, uh, uh, there is a term which we will be hearing quite a long time or else uh, quite a long time and is called as the uh, e-commerce or else, or else the electronic commerce. So, what is an electronic commerce? So, whenever we are uh, uh, whenever we are uh, hearing the term e-commerce, most of the people they will be thinking only online shopping. So, e-commerce is nothing but a online shopping, but that is online shopping is a part of e-commerce, but online shopping is not purely or else the only concept that is on the e-commerce. So, online shopping, uh, suppose if you want to buy some greeting card or something, uh, then you log on to some sites and then you can pay and you can get the greeting card uh, mailed at your uh, mailed at, uh, at your uh, communication address, then you can send or else some cassettes, CDs, all these will be all these will be uh, considered as the online shopping. But uh, other than the online shopping, there are different features, different facilities that can that we can get it from get from a e-commerce site. So, e-commerce can be defined as a modern business, business methodology that addresses the needs of organizations, merchants and consumers to cut costs while improving the quality of goods and services and increasing the speed of service delivery. This e-commerce is a business methodology or else modern business methodology upon which we will be doing the business online or else through electronic means or else we will be using some extra means. So, 
this will be cutting down the cost, the reliability and then by improving the quality of goods and even the services that are to be that will be provided everything will be getting from the e commerce. And uh, what are the features of the e commerce? E commerce is associated with the buying and selling of information products and services via computer networks. The key element is the information processing. This particular uh, type, uh, facilitates new types of information based business processes for reaching with the reaching with the customers. So, getting the information online by paying by pay, uh, uh, payments uh, by making the payments and then suppose if you want to buy a product or else if you want to advertise a product and if you want to get some services or else if you want to lodge some compliance online then all these things will be coming under the e-commerce uh, technique. And then uh, in order to uh, in order to make this one uh, fulfill, we have to have a super highway called as the information super highway. A myriad of communi computers, communication networks and uh, communication software forms the nascent information super highway. And uh, this particular super highway is responsible for the, uh, for the uh, commerce to go on electronic means. So, for uh, suppose uh, you, uh, this is not at all a particular uh, super highway concerned to USA or Malaysia or India or something like that. This is a global highway, global super highway. So, suppose in, uh, in uh, USA you will be calling that one as the NII and uh, in Malaysia you will be calling that one as the MAL. So, different uh, super highways we have and uh, every super highway is connected or globally interconnected with one another which will be making possible for the e-commerce to go on. And what are these consumer oriented e-commerce applications? How, how the consumer is benefited uh, by this particular e-commerce strategy? This, uh, suppose if you take the case of entertainments, movies on demand, if you want to have the catalog look, then you have the video cataloging, interactive ads are there and then multi-user games are there, online discussions are there. These are all comes under the entertainment category of e-commerce. And then suppose if you want if you want to have some financial services, home banking, financial services, financial news, all these will be com coming under the category of financial services and information of e-commerce. And there are some essential services, those are something called uh, home shopping is there, online shopping is there, electronic catalogs are available, which uh, suppose if you want to have the catalog, uh, uh, you can pay and get the catalog on your name and then the telemedicine concept is there and remote diagno diag diagnostics are there. Suppose if you want, if you can um, um, uh, make available the symptoms on, make available the things uh, entered, then you can get the telemedicine or else the remote the diagnos uh, diagnostics is possible. All these will be coming under the essential uh, services category of e-commerce. And then the, uh, the very prominent uh, thing is the uh, education and training. Suppose if some interactive education is to be provided, online education to, uh, education on some uh, payment procedures are to be done, then education and training, interactive education is possible, video conference is possible or online databases are possible under the category of education and training of e-commerce. And, and what are the pillars of the e-commerce? On which uh, pillars the e-commerce is stand upon? So, there are two pillars, one is called as the public policy and the third second is called as the technical standards. What actually is the public policy? To govern such issues as universal access, privacy and information pricing. Suppose if you want to price the information, what all is called as a prime uh, e-commerce is a, uh, so we are paying something or else we are uh, getting something by paying some price. That particular information pricing, how private it should be or else how privacy that should be uh, the privacy and what will be the access, is it the universal access or uh, some uh, uh, access only upon some uh, secured uh, things, then all these things will be uh, uh, make a, all these things will be taken uh, care by the pillar called as the public policy. And the second is the technical standards to dictate the nature of information, publishing user, user interface and transport in the interest of compatibility across the entire networks. All these things will be taken care by the pillar under, under the pillar called as the technical standards. What kind of technical standards, what kind of technical methodology that is to be uh, perf uh, that is to be uh, that is to be have on the 
e-commerce side. This is the these two are the strong pillars of e-commerce upon which the whole e-commerce is stand upon. And then the types there are different types of e-commerce. Uh, we'll be hearing about B2B, B2C, and then intra-company e-commerce. These are all the different types of e-commerce that we have. And then how this implementation is done? Suppose if some e-commerce site we have to launch some e-commerce site. A particular awareness training is to be required. Suppose what actually we are going to, or else uh, the e-commerce is not a one particular concept as I had told you before. Before, so what kind of uh, suppose if you are going to launch uh, launch uh, e-commerce site for your organizations, what kind of uh, e-commerce site, what type of e-commerce you are going to do? Uh, that awareness you should have. First of all, you should uh, get the training. These are the possible features you can have or else uh, you can uh, have this kind of uh, e-commerce site for your organization, that clear picture you should have. Afterwards, you have to have the business analysis, what kind of business are you into and then uh, what particular uh, type of e-commerce is suitable to your business. This kind of analysis you have to do and uh, related, uh, related stuff, uh, related the things you have to identify in order to launch the e-commerce site and then the requirements analysis. After the business analysis is done, then the requirements, what kind of requirements or else uh, requirements are to be analyze, analyzed and then comes the design stage and then implementation, uh, implementation stage, afterwards integration and the validation stage and the last is the maintenance stage. You might be wondering, so these particular things all are uh, the completely, uh, uh, completely giving the picture in as like that of the system analysis and design exactly. This is the thing system analysis and design relating to the e-commerce site. So, this is the uh, implementation whenever we are going to launch or uh, implement an e-commerce project for our company, these are the particular things we have to take care of or these are the stages we have to pass and we have to at last we have to implement that site. And the systems of payments, there are different systems of payments whenever there is a uh, online payments. So, manually we are not at all paying anything. So, uh, there are some different techniques or uh, different modes where in which we can do the payments online. So, one is the credit card base and the second is the smart cards. These are also uh, just like the credit cards with some uh, necessary information uh, stored in the micro microprocessor chips and then electronic purses, digital or electronic cash, electronic checks or else e-checks, e-wallets or else electronic wallets, these are some of the uh, modes wherein which we can pay online. Select any insurance company such that it may have the online customer services facility and uh, mention the current stage and what kind of automation is ha it is having, what kind of integration, what kind of net networking they are following and how this each de department or section or group are connected on the network and what kind of communication technology they are using and advantages, disadvantages of online insurance customer services, details of the transaction services that can be made available through online, what kind of payments they are uh, accepting and what kind of secured electronic transactions or else what kind of uh, uh, secured electronic transactions uh, they are following up. All these you have to take in care. Suppose if you are aiming for a distinction, distinction category then better to have a physical look of these all these things. Go to a insurance company who has all these facilities, look there how the systems are working, how the manual uh, before that how the manual system was worked and after the introduction of the communication technology or networking, how they got benefited and how the internet is working over there, how, how, how the in online concept is working, what kind of features they had provided, what kind of feature, what kind of services they are providing online to the customers and how the modes of payment, how the uh, payment transactions are going on, how they are linked to the credit card companies, all these things you physically examine. Then you will get the feel how the all these things are working and this is nothing but the communication technology your course. So, if you have the physical feel, if you have the physical concept understood, then it is easy to answer the um, assignment questions, even the term and examination is very easy to answer. Uh, so, wish you all the best and thank you.